Good morning. Good morning. And the Lord be with you. And also with you. And a very warm welcome to everyone as we gather in the Lord's house for worship today. Uh, today is a special day here at St. Paul. We're going to be welcoming some new members into the congregation right after the sermon. Uh, so we'll, we'll ask them to stand at that point and they will become members. We have a reception after church uh, for anyone who would like to stay for that. We understand some people aren't completely comfortable with that yet, and that's fine. But if you are, we certainly invite you to come and, uh, and share with us uh, for a little bit of fellowship. Uh, we do have a voters meeting next Sunday, right after worship, for the purpose of elections. Uh, so all of our voting members, including the new members coming in today, are certainly uh, encouraged to stay and vote next week. If there's other business that needs to come to the floor, that can be brought up as well. And then our Bible studies continue this week also. Anything we need to share today? If not, as we move into worship, today is the seventh Sunday after Easter. That is the, the last of our Easter Sundays. Next week will be Pentecost. This past Thursday was Ascension Day. So that means we're in that kind of time of wonder, if you will, for the, the apostles, the disciples who were following Jesus. They've seen him ascend into heaven. They've been told to wait for something that's coming, the comforter. Uh, but they didn't exactly know what to expect at this point. But nonetheless, we're reassured in our faith that Jesus Christ, our ascended Lord, is the foundation of our faith and our hope is in him. With that thought in mind, let's stand and sing our opening hymn. Together as his people, 
Let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking His grace for the sake of Christ and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner.
Lord be with you. And also with you. Let's pray. O King of glory, Lord of hosts, uplifted in triumph far above all heavens, leave us not without consolation, but send us the Spirit of truth whom you promised from the Father. For you live and reign with him in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. First reading is from Acts chapter 1. Then the apostles returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day journey away. And when they had entered, they went up to the upper room where they were staying. Peter and John and James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James the son of Alphaeus and Simon the Zealot and Judas the son of James. All these with one accord were devoting themselves to prayer together with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and his brothers. In those days, Peter stood up among the brothers, a company of persons with them, all about 120. And he said, Brothers, the scripture had to be fulfilled, which the Holy Spirit spoke beforehand by the mouth of David concerning Judas, who had become a guide to those who arrested Jesus. For he was numbered among us, and a lot of his share in this ministry. Now this man brought field with the reward of his wickedness, and falling headlong, he burst open in the middle, and all his bowels gushed out, and became known to all the inhabitants of Jerusalem, so that the field was called, in their own language, the Kelma, that is, field of blood. For it is written in the book of Psalms, May his camp become desolate, and let there be no one to the it. And let another take his office. So one of the men who have accompanied us during all the time that the Lord Jesus went up and out among us, beginning from the baptism of John to the day when he was taken up from us, one of those men was become with us a witness to his resurrection. And they put forward too Joseph called Barsabbas, who was also called Justice and Matthias. And they prayed and said, You, Lord, are the parts of all. Show me one of these two you have chosen to take the place in this ministry and apostleship, for which Judas turned aside to go to his own place. And they cast lots for them, and the lot fell on Matthias, and he was numbered with the eleven apostles. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle reading is from 1 John, chapter 5. If we receive the testimony of men, the testimony of God is greater for this is the testimony that God that had, he has borne concerning his Son. Whoever believes in the Son of God has the testimony in himself. Whoever does not believe God has made him a liar, because he has not believed the testimony that God has borne concerning his Son. And this is the testimony, that God gave us eternal life, and that this life is in his Son. Whoever the Son has life, whoever has the Son has life, Whoever does not have the Son of God does not have life. I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, that you may know you have eternal life. And this is the confidence that we have toward him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us in whatever we ask, we will know that we have the request that we have asked of him. This is the word of the Lord.
scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins. And I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Scripture that our Heavenly Father hears the prayers of His people. Assured of His fatherly care, let us speak together the words of the Apostles' Creed regarding the first person of the Holy Trinity. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth. What does this mean? I believe that God has made me and all creatures, that He has given me my body and soul, eyes, ears, and all my members, my 
reason in all my senses, and still takes care of them. He also gives me clothing and shoes, food and drink, house and home, wife and children, land, animals, and all I have. He richly and daily provides me with all that I need to support this body and life. He defends me against all danger and guards and protects me from all evil. All this he does only out of fatherly divine goodness and mercy, without any merit or worthiness in me. For all this it is my duty to thank and praise, serve and obey him. This is most certainly true. Brothers and sisters in Christ, grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God the Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The text for this morning's message is from our epistle reading from 1 John chapter 5, and I share with you these words. This is the testimony that God gave us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. Whoever has the Son has life. Whoever does not have the Son of God does not have life. He makes it very simple for us, doesn't he, as he opens up what the faith really is centered in. The faith that we have is centered in Jesus Christ, our risen Lord, and only in him. It isn't in some other place. It isn't uh, to be found elsewhere in this world. It is in Christ, and it is in Christ alone. As you hear the text and live in our world, a lot of things probably swirl through your mind at different times. After 15 or 16 months, our pastors were going to have their very first in-person pastors meeting for our Richmond Circuit this week. And Wednesday afternoon at 5.30, we received an email that said, we're going to meet by Zoom again this week because some of the pastors couldn't get gas. Any of you sit in gas lines this week and uh, enjoy that? We have one of the pastors who's coming up from Williamsburg. He said he sat for an hour and a half to fill his tank up, and he had a couple other places he had to go for, for church business, so he wasn't going to be in the meeting. Others were having trouble finding gas, and the whole whole thing was messed up once again. And that kind of brings us back to thinking a little bit about what was, what was life like back in the days when John was writing? What was life like back when Jesus was in the world in his public ministry? How did people feel about Rome? Ever wonder about that? Well, we know as far as uh, the Jews were concerned. They hated Rome. When Jesus arrived in Jerusalem for that Palm Sunday triumphal entry, Jesus was supposed to come into Jerusalem. He was supposed to ascend to the, the throne of David, and he was going to drive out the Romans. They wanted them to be gone. What about in John's day? Well, in Paul's day, even, as you think about some of these things, what you begin to realize is, reading the scriptures, they didn't pay a whole lot of attention to the civil government around them. Now, when we heard it in our catechism this morning about what God provides for us, civil government certainly is one of those things. He provides civil government for the purpose that we would have a peaceable and quiet life. That we might care for our families, that we might have jobs and, and, and do those things that, that serve God and care for one another. But beyond that, the scriptures don't pay a whole lot of attention. Yeah, there's places where it gets mentioned, but if you think about Paul and the troubles that he had, he certainly was executed, according to our tradition, uh, by the Roman government. Peter, the same thing. But that didn't deter their ministry in the least. They go from 
place to place, carry out the ministry that needs to be carried out. Paul even took advantage of the liberties that the, the Roman government gave to him at various times. But he used it all for the purpose of proclaiming Jesus Christ. In 1 Corinthians chapter 1, Paul makes it absolutely clear. We preach Christ crucified. And that is the very heart of our faith. And that is why God has placed us here in the first place. Why he has brought us together as a, a church family. In order that we can hear about Christ crucified for our sins. Who has risen again as the firstborn of many who are going to rise from the dead. That is our hope and expectation in Jesus Christ our Lord. With him as the, the center of our faith, you might think about those very early Christians. When there was some persecution that went on in different places at different times, you heard about how they would make that sign of the fish. You see that sometimes in, on, on cars of Christians and other places. Because they had that acronym, ichthus, you know, ichthyology, the study of fish and things like that. The Greek word for for fish was ichthus, and they used that, the letters from that, to stand for Jesus Christ, God's Son, Savior. That was the heart of the faith. That was a creedal statement that they would make in their day. Jesus Christ, God's Son, Savior. The world swirls around us. Leaders come and leaders go. Nations come and nations go. Problems come. COVID. Gasoline. Inflation. You name it. And as a pastor once told me, if you think you've seen the worst of, of problems, just wait a little while. It'll get worse. He was talking about nuclear, you know, bombings and, and the end of the world coming with a nuclear holocaust and then the fact that we had these terrible munitions. We'll find something better. Don't, don't worry. It, it will happen. But he also said, don't worry. Because you know who you belong to. See, that's the world that we, we live in. That's the world that our Parents and grandparents and, and all who came before us lived in. A world that is filled with problems. And also, as our catechism reminds us, a world that is filled with blessings. Blessings from God. Look at your, your brothers and sisters around you. The new members that are coming into our congregation that God has led to be with us today. Blessings that, that we can't even begin to fully imagine and understand. But God has placed us here at this point in time. He has brought us together in a world that's filled with problems and troubles and difficulties. And he has said, you're my people. He made us to be that in the waters of holy baptism as he brought us into his kingdom. He sustains us with his word and with his sacrament as we gather around his altar. As we have our, our private devotions at home. We're assured in our gospel reading that he hears our prayers as we offer them up. And he does all of that out of divine love. Out of the goodness of his divine heart. He does all of that for us. And he holds us close to him. See, in a world that is filled with troubles and difficulties, we're often led to, to realize we need something. I think that's what God maybe was doing through, through this last COVID that we've been through, through all the, the different things.
things that we hear from, from medical professionals and officials and who knows, you know, different people listening to different things. And it gets confusing, to say the very least. Where is the truth? And we're led back to that in our scriptures today. Your word is truth. In a world that we can't always rely on, we can always rely on our Lord. We know what he tells us. We know where he says our hope is. To uh, quote the Lutheran Hour speaker from a few years ago, uh, he said that as far as he could tell, the death rate in America is still right at 100%. Um, so if you, didn't, if you didn't die from COVID, chances are somewhere down the road, unless Christ returns in power and glory, you and I are going to die from something. Sooner or later, it's going to catch up with us. And our time to go and be with the Lord will come. We don't know when. Most of us don't really know how. But the one thing we do know is because sin has come into the world and death has come through sin, we all are going to die. But we have hope. A sure and certain hope. And the foundation of that hope is in Jesus Christ, God's Son, our Savior. The one who came into this world because he knew the condition that we were all in. He knew the, the need that we had and that we couldn't offer up our own sacrifice that would be sufficient. Scriptures use different words to talk about us. Dead in our sins. Dead in our trespasses. Lost. Unable to do anything for ourselves. So what does God do? Well, right from the beginning, he had a plan. Genesis chapter 3, verse 15 is considered to be the very first gospel that we hear. Who's there? It's God bringing judgment on Adam and Eve. And Satan is there as well. And what Satan is told is that there's going to come a time when God is going to send one whose heel will be bruised, but Satan's head will be crushed. And that was Jesus Christ our Lord, who came and crushed the very head of Satan in order to rescue us from the power of sin, death, and the devil, in order that we would be his here in this world, and that we would be his eternally. Sharing the joys of eternal life in heaven with him. That we would be his own. That we would offer him our thanks and our praise. And that we would receive the blessings that he has for us and live in them. Graciously live in them. Giving him thanks and praise for all the goodness that he offers to us each day. Brothers and sisters in Christ, as we go through this life, some of you have, have seen different things at different times, but you know that the life, this world is filled with troubles, and this world is filled with blessings. Stay anchored in Jesus Christ, your Lord. That's where your hope is. That's where your assurance is. In his life, in his death, in his resurrection, where he has brought us the forgiveness of sins and the assurance of life eternal. That is the foundation of our faith. Jesus Christ, God's Son, our Savior. Amen. At this time, I would invite our new members to simply stand in, in your seats.
Beloved in the Lord, our Lord Jesus Christ said to his apostles, Whoever confesses me before men, I will also confess before my Father who is in heaven. But whoever denies me before men, I will also deny before my Father who is in heaven. Lift up your hearts, therefore, to the God of all grace, and joyfully give answer to what I now ask you in the name of the Lord. Do you this day, in the presence of God and of this congregation, acknowledge the gifts that God gave you in your baptism? Yes, I do. Do you renounce the devil and all his works and all his ways? Yes, I do not. Do you believe in God the Father Almighty, in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, and in the Holy Spirit? Do you hold all the prophetic and apostolic scriptures to be the inspired word of God and the doctrine of the evangelical Lutheran Church drawn from them and confessed in the small catechism to be faithful and true? Do you intend to hear the word of God and receive the Lord's Supper faithfully? Do you intend to live according to the word of God and in faith, word, and deed to remain true to God? Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, even to death? I do, by the grace of God. Do you intend to continue steadfast in this confession and church, and to suffer all, even death, rather than fall away from it? I do, by the grace of God. Do you desire to become a member of this congregation? I do. Will you support the work our gracious Lord has given this congregation with your prayers and the gifts God has given you? Upon this, your confession, I acknowledge publicly that you are members of the Evangelical Lutheran Church and of this congregation. Receive the Lord's Supper and participate with us in all the blessings of salvation that our Lord has given to his church. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father. We thank and praise you for your great goodness in bringing these, your sons and daughters, to the knowledge of your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, and enabling them both with a heart to believe and with a mouth to confess his saving name. Grant that by your word and spirit they may continue steadfast in the one true faith and the fellowship of this congregation, as together we await the day when all who have fought the good fight of faith shall receive the crown of righteousness. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And please just remain standing for a moment. We welcome into the congregation today Grace Gulick. Uh, she's coming in from First English Lutheran Church in Richmond. And we receive Tom and Yvonne Harder. They're a little further away, joining us from, from Fort Myers, Florida, Bethlehem Lutheran Church down there. Welcome to this area. And we also welcome Jim and Donna, is it Volkel, Volkel, Volkel? And you're joining from the Way Lutheran Church up in Fredericksburg. So welcome. It's good to have all of you with us today. And again, we have a reception after church for anyone who feels comfortable in staying. You may be seated. We rise for prayer. And our prayers today, in addition to those who are on the prayer list, we want to pray for uh, Bill Zanakis, a friend of Judy Lowry. He has prostate cancer. We pray for Janice Carpenter, sister-in-law of Paul Farkas. She is hospitalized. And we pray for Deborah Toth, a prayer of, of thanks. In addition, she is recuperating from uh, successful surgery. Back at home, and all went well. So we give the Lord thanks for that and pray for a continued recovery. 
Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Our first petition is for the church, the community of God's forgiven people, asking that God's messengers continue to speak with power among us and that we be engaged fully in service to God and in ministry to one another. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord. We pray this day for the fellowship of faith and love that we enjoy as God's holy people, asking that we gather for worship with great joy and full anticipation of the blessings of God that come to us through it. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord. We pray for those who serve in leadership positions in our synod and district, especially for President Harrison, our synodical president, and President Denninger our district president, and for our pastor and those who lead our local congregation, that God work among us through their example and witness, that we grow in devotion and dedication in his name. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. We also make our petition for the sick, the shut-in, and all who this day are in need of our prayers. We especially pray for Janice Carpenter, for Judy Lowry, Deborah Toad, Alma Wright, Bill Zanakis, for Richard Amos, Joanne Augsburger, Liz Bassett, Mary Broderick, John Dawson, and Rick Donnelly, for Lonnie Ellis, Kevin Farkas, Paul Farkas, Cameron Garton, Faye Garza, Elmer Gilmay, and Pat Heflin, for Bill Herndon, Heather Honeycutt, Gary Yeager, Janet Lohman, Kirsten Lohmeyer, and Todd Lowry, for Carolyn Lusenhop, Cindy Marshall, Cindy Messina, and Thelma Miller, for Rachel Milstead, Wayne Past, Karen Ramming, Elsie Sauer, Mark Sauer, and Connie Scott. For Fred Tate, Paul Tharp, Billy Walton, and Rob Weston. That their prayers are soon answered and that they are supported by God's people as they experience his good and gracious will for their lives. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Amen. With thankfulness, we remember those who now rest from their labors. Grant that we be instructed by their examples and follow in their paths of faith. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord and this day we pray also for all of those who serve in international ministries, especially Pastor Matt Wood and family. Lord, we pray that through the work that they do, that many would hear the good news and that many would come to believe. Keep Pastor Wood and family safe as they seek to return to Indonesia and grant them your blessing. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord. We also pray for all of those who bring offerings this day, that they would do so in giving joyfully from the heart, returning to you a portion of the many blessings that you have given them in their lives. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord. And Heavenly Father, we thank you for the new members that you've brought into our midst this day. We pray that together we might continue to glorify your name, that together we would receive the many blessings that you have for us, and that together we would carry that word to the communities around us. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Amen. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and everlasting God, for the countless blessings you so freely bestow on us and all creation. Above all, we give thanks for your boundless love shown to us when you sent your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, into our flesh and laid on him our sin, giving him into death that we might not die eternally. Because he is now risen from the dead and lives and reigns to all eternity, all who believe in him will overcome sin and death and will rise again to new life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, nevermore praising you and saying,
our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he gave his thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also, he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and drink of it, all of you. This cup is my blood of the New Testament, which has been poured out for you for the forgiveness of all of your sin. Do this as often as you drink of it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Amen.
this body and blood strengthen and preserve you in the one true faith from this life and on into life everlasting. Depart in peace. Serve the Lord. Amen.